So I couldn't think of anything else to do. So, um, I'm just gonna review Inhumans, or the first two hours of Inhumans. And, uh, since the episode two is coming out tonight, I suppose it's, um, somewhat timely that, uh, today I would be reviewing the first episode. Now, um, <laughs> Attilan looked pretty, okay, so with the force field and stuff, Attilan looked really good. But the inside of Attilan looks really rough and sort of square and generic and a bit like uh, Star Wars-y, but not like the good way. Everything's just sort of a gray square is what I mean. Uh, there's not a ton of detail in any specific spot. And there's a, there's a lot of plot holes and just details that are really annoying about, um, about the series. Uh, Diversity in Comics or Splato Delgato is streaming now. So I'll probably watch that when I'm done this. Um, anyway, uh, my point is, there's a lot of crap wrong with it. I, I, it's not very good. Now, that isn't to say it was boring, because it wasn't boring necessarily. I wasn't, I didn't find myself terribly bored at any point, at any point during the show. Um, but granted, I was also on my iPod, so I wasn't, some of my attention was taken by that, because I was, I was communicating with people, um, but yeah, so it, it wasn't, it wasn't boring, but it also wasn't terribly gripping either, obviously, or I wouldn't have been on, on my iPod, um, now in terms of, uh, the quality of acting, I think it's okay, and it, <laughs> but it could definitely be better, um, so let's start from the beginning, I suppose, so, uh, Triton, uh, the Inhuman Triton goes to save some Inhuman girl on Earth. He was running away from, uh, from a bunch of guys with guns. And, um, they start shooting. <laughs> and when they start shooting, uh, Triton essentially abandons his mission, uh, leaves the girl. Like, he, he runs in the opposite direction, and the girl gets shot because she's lost her protector. And, um... And Triton, Triton jumps off a, uh, is shot, and he jumps off a cliff into the water. And everybody assumes he's dead, even when they watch the, um, the, I guess, the projection of what happened. Which doesn't make any sense, because Triton is a giant fish man. So, if he was able to block the, uh, the blood from the wound, he should be completely fine. I don't know why jumping into the water was a, was a concern. Um, so he's literally a, he, a, a giant fish person in the comics. He's like this green guy and he's got a fin on his head and he wears like purple straps. But, um, he's a, he's a bit toned down in the show. Anyway, um, that plot hole aside, <coughs> Karnak is another person who didn't seem to really work very well. So Karnak's powers are, he can see the weakness and everything. He can see the, uh, the fault, the fault. Um, which is fine, but then he sort of uses it for, uh, he uses it in social situations where he could see the issues in people, which is a bit odd, and he should be able to see the issues in Maximus, in that he should be able to tell if that Maximus the Mad is going to betray them or whatever, if that's the case. And there's another instance where his powers don't work when he's climbing down the, uh, a, a, a cliff, like he's climbing down the face of a cliff. Uh, he doesn't know that the rock he's about to step on is a weak point somehow, and then he falls and bumps his head. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, what, uh, okay, so Black Bolt goes to Earth, and his his attire is a bit strange, I guess, but it just sort of looks like a biker suit. Uh, anyway, he should know how human currency works, because they're surveying Earth all the time. So he's either um, a pompous jackass, or completely mentally challenged, which isn't... That's, I'm not saying that against mentally challenged people, like, that's... That's, um... That's what I'm saying here. Uh, so he doesn't... He either doesn't care or doesn't know how human currency works, so he just steals a suit and breaks a guy's arm and assaults a bunch of people for doing their jobs, and, um, when, when he's arrested, he, uh, he, he seems to understand what the cops are saying, he seems to, like, get 
the procedure after he's arrested of like what to do and he surrenders his stuff over so i don't know why he was so hostile and he took like a complete flip um then later on uh medusa uh calls him and for some reason they don't have like well they do seem to have video chat and texting and stuff right so why can't he just text her or whatever and communicate his location instead of just streaming his heartbeat over the microphone um also there's a bit in the show where um where uh crystal is taken into her room and she's uh held like rapunzel in her apartment and um one of the one of the other inhuman chicks comes in and uh she talks to her and then leaves and like obviously uh pretends to drop her her communicator so she calls medusa on the communicator and medusa picks up the call uh and that allows them to track it which means that they would have had to have medusa's contact on their phone they begin with especially since they're um associates anyway so i don't know why they needed crystal to um to trace the call for them because when medusa picks up the phone she says, oh, you know, she's not that dumb. They're tracing it. And then she can, she continues to talk. So it's obviously not like an, oh, an after 60 seconds thing they can track the call. Like, it's clearly instant. Um, so that's another plot hole. And then, uh, and then there's a bunch of cops on Black Bolt for breaking a guy's hand. But then when Medusa kills a bunch of guys, or not Medusa, when, when Medusa kills the other chick, uh, supposedly... And the other chick kills a bunch of guys. Nobody seems to care or notice. Um, which is odd because the guy in the bus was clearly supposed to be going somewhere. And when he doesn't show up, when he didn't show up to that uh, location, presumably they were just uh, like, all right, I guess I guess he's gone. Oh, well. And they got on with it, which is not how that works. You know, if you have a job to do, you've got to do it. Um, so there, there should have been some sort of um questioning as to where those people went and then medusa stabs the chick and leaves her there and so <laughs> and throws a tarp over her uh and then the girl regenerates she leaves like the knife in in the girl and the girl regenerates but she should have known that she wasn't dead and that she can regenerate right she she should have known what her power set was if they're associates uh long time associates or whatever and um also there's there's like a very much a elitist sort of, um, thing going on, like a North Korean thing, where, um, the royal family are, like, uh, Kim Jong-un, and, um, the rest of the Inhumans are, are, like, the, the North Korean people, in that, um, the Inhumans, or the, the royal family all live in, like, this, this, uh, tower or whatever, and they feast, like, the Dickens, and they have all these, all this luxury crap, and all of the other Inhumans have to work in the mines, for Terrigen, so that they can make more Inhumans to work in the mines. It's really odd and uncomfortable. And then, and then they're also scared of going to Earth, because they think they'll be, like, ridiculed or whatever. Which, like, fair enough, if you send a giant fish man, <laughs> like they did. But if you send, um, if you send just, like, a normal-looking person, like Medusa, or Crystal, or any of them, really, nobody will notice you're just another guy walking down the street. Anyway, that's that's my review. I would give it like a, I don't know, a 5 out of 10. Um, yeah, that's it. I'll, I'll see you guys tomorrow.